bet. Okay, well, obviously a lot of things have happened since I've uh, recorded last. I apologize, but I'm going to walk you through some things here um, uh, as far as where we're at now and how we got here. So just wanted to talk to you uh, some things. As far as the system itself, you know, you saw it last one is white and I plumbed everything. One thing that you're going to learn that you may not always do everything right exactly the first time. So as time goes by, you're going to have to tweak the system. So I wanted to show you something over here. Um, I showed you in the video of this right here, and this would set the height of the water in the tanks, which it does. But I had a loop, and what that was was a natural siphon. So when the power goes off, it would continually drain the fish tanks because of the siphon effect and then grow into the grow beds and eventually flood my um, my uh, sump pit. And then the fish tank water would go down severely. So this right here, by setting it like this and putting it like a vent right here, as soon as the water goes off, reaches a certain level, it actually shuts off probably about right here as far as the water level. So that's a tweak that I've made since making the last video. Um, so. Don't, don't, don't be shy, you know, you, you put a lot of work into this and, and then you find out that something's not working quite right. Uh, don't be shy in, in making a fix. Don't be shy in retweaking, retuning, because I think you're gonna continually do that. Um, and then, as you can see back here, I kind of uh, added another feature to the system and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Uh, the other thing too is, uh, once we put the grow media into the system, I, uh, again, we deal with a lot of rain here. Uh, I saw some sinking um, in some of the grow beds uh, because obviously the cinder blocks were sinking down into the ground. And over here, uh, you can see where the system has sunk. And uh, the, the water level is supposed to be one inch to two inches below the top of the surface here. As you can see, um, I'm, I'm it's, it's sunk down and now the water level's right there. That's got to get repaired. Now I've shorted it up once, uh, but we've got to actually do a little bit more work. So you're going to have some settling and you're going to have to deal with those settling issues. So just be prepared for that. The only other thing that I thought I could have done is maybe actually uh, poured concrete piers. Uh, but, but again, uh, you know, obviously if it's not your property or something like that, or you don't know if you want this permanently in your yard, you know, you don't know if you want to pour concrete piers. So that's another thing that you're going to have to deal with as far as the settling. So uh, uh, now, now, as you can see here, I've got uh, grow media in here. We got this. This is just river rock. Uh, we, we got this. Uh, the thing that you want to do is test it first. Uh, what you do is you just put a series of rock in some uh, containers and pour vinegar into it. It doesn't matter. It's just as long as it's vinegar. And if you see any severely fizzling, uh, then you've got some media that's not gonna work with your system. Because what that does is, is it will drive the pH up too high to where it'll affect your system. And then obviously your, uh, your, like your plants and stuff can be affected. So uh, what I did is I tested this over and over and I got a little bit of fizzle on, on a few rocks, but as a whole, I did not get any fizzle. So, so again, it's just river rock. Um, we, uh, uh, we, we, we sorted it, and if you want to show this, uh, we sorted it, as you can see, we got various sizes. You don't want to get too small, because what happens is it, it gets too compacted, um, and you, you don't want to get too big, obviously, is either, because, uh, and I'm going to talk about it here in a minute, but you want it to where your worms can actually get through the, uh, the, the media easily. So, like I said, you don't want too big, and you do ne definitely do not want too small of a small of a rock um, and then as far as the bell siphons I just want to show you this these are working great I showed you more detail about the bell siphons uh, before but this is working great uh, your your goal is is that your 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 grow bed will flood and uh, and drain every 45 minutes and what this does is it permits um, the system to um, to to you know get the water off the roots, suck oxygen down into it, so that's good for your worms, but also that's good for the system because you're inducing oxygen and then your water comes back up. So uh, uh, so all my system right here is on bell siphon. So every grow bed is filling back up 
and then draining within about 45 minutes. So that's another thing that you want to do. Um, as far as the 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 uh, the painting here, the mistake that I made was as I painted these within the actual metal brackets. You could easily take these out. If I had to redo this whole entire thing, um, I would have took them all out and I would have painted them and then set them back in because it was not fun trying to paint all this. Uh, so uh, I would highly suggest before you put your system together, take your plastic out or paint your stuff first and then assemble it because I just think it uh, would have been a lot faster uh, than, than, um, than trying to paint, uh, paint it wise in place when all the plumbing was already fixed in place. Um, now, I talked about we were gonna grow, uh, um, we were gonna grow uh, oregano, and I changed uh, my, my, uh, my product that I'm gonna grow. I'm actually growing now yerba buena down here in Honduras. It's a mint that's used in a lot of their uh, dishes and so forth. And I found out in the marketplace uh, that they don't get it as readily available as they wish. So I basically uh, got yerba buena to, to put in the system. Um, we actually went into the mountains. Um, there's people up there that grow it. And uh, we got a bunch of yerba buena from them. And then we uh, basically transplanted it back into here. And as you can see, it's doing wonderful. Um, I've had some insects issues uh, with, with the yerba buena. I've had a lot of caterpillars on there. So we've been going through this uh, system and we've just been looking for cattle, caterpillar poop. And we've been, uh, that obviously identifies that there's caterpillars in the area and we've been picking the caterpillars off. Now I'll talk to you about uh, insect prevention here in a minute. Um, but uh, but as, as of right now, I'm doing really good on insects. Uh, we did put some watercress on this side. Um, I just got attacked endlessly by uh, silkworms and I just felt like it wasn't worth the battle. Um, it's not a product that I have to have, so I just went with everything as far as mint. Uh, there's a lot of insects that don't like the smell of mint, so I'm really not, I don't feel like I have to battle as much as maybe some other people on insects. So that's where we're at. It's growing really good. Um, now, as far as uh, nutrients, uh, your system is not gonna get, uh, how do I wanna say, uh, in the full effect for about six to eight months. So nutrients can be an issue. Now, there is a, uh, a, a store in the United States that I'm consulting with, it's True Aquaponics Store, and I put the link in the YouTube uh, description and also I'm gonna show it up right there. Um, I highly, you get a hold of uh, Roger Loper, uh, he's an incredible guy. Um, he's really helped me. I've taken some photos of my plants and shown him uh, everything and then he recommends what I need and then obviously he sells the product. So please don't take advantage of him and say, hey, what's my problem? And then you go try to find it yourself. Please utilize Roger. Uh, he's a great guy uh, and he will really work hard for you. So I've got nutrients coming next week so I'm really excited about that. But in the meantime, what I've done is I've used uh, uh, seaweed, it's a uh, maxi crop. Uh, I've used seaweed, um, I put eggshells um, under these water spigots, and then also I've used uh, chelated iron. Now, uh, according to Roger, you have to be careful about chelated iron, so I was actually using chelated iron that could affect my fish, so I've got new chelated iron coming. So, just by doing that, the, the like I said, the um, uh, chelated iron, the seaweed, and then the eggshells, my uh, leaves have greened up really nice. Uh, so, and, and I'm getting a lot of growth. I've added the fish to the system. So I'm starting to get a lot of growth. I'm very, very happy with what I've seen so far, uh, especially with a system that's only been running maybe about a month. So um, I'm very happy about that, but I really believe in my heart that uh, we're gonna see some really awesome growth once we start getting the right nutrients into it. Uh, he's talked to me about some potassium, uh, and some other products, but he has all kinds of products and he can help you uh, do what you need to do. Now, also too, we got worms coming. Um, uh, you know, it's not like the United States where you can go to the uh, local store and buy worms. Uh, uh, so we got worms coming from a university in another area of the country. And so uh, I'm gonna uh, put the worms in here. The worms are incredible uh, for the system as well. Uh, they do a lot of activity. You could do some research on that. Uh, 
So obviously, once the worms get here, we get more fish into the system, we get the nutrients. Um, we're gonna see this thing really take off. Also too, we've got insect stuff, uh, natural ways to rid the, of the insects, and you definitely wanna research. There's a lot of great videos on that as well. Uh, you do not want to use any type of chemical uh, on on this unless it's absolutely safe for aquaponics and your fish. You have to always be uh, protecting your fish and guarding over your fish. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, the, the duckweed system here. Um, what I initially was going to do is I was going to put duckweed uh, in my um, sump pit. And uh, so I put the duckweed in there and because your sump pit goes up and down, it was not a good thing because what happened was is duckweed would uh, um, stay on the wall so I had a, like six inches of duckweed all the way around and then what was happening is some of the roots were floating to the bottom around the pump and clogging the pump up so uh, immediately I took another IVC tote and I set this system up to where I have uh, a little bit of water you want to take a shot there a little bit of water trickling in duckweed does not like a lot of emotion uh, motion meaning and so I put a little bit of trickle of water there and then what I do is I went over here I put a bulkhead connector at the bottom and then I surrounded it with like a three or four inch pipe there so the duck we won't clog that up and that's just draining back down into uh, the uh, sump pit right here so this duckweed obviously is an incredible uh, food source for the fish and that's what I use it for um, I actually have an aquaculture system as well, so I use this to feed my fish in my aquaculture system, and then I use it to feed my fish in the tank. And at first, you know, the fish that I had, they were used to uh, just, you know, fish food um, that you buy at the store, and so they didn't take to the duckweed right away, but now um, I mix it with the fish food and they, they eat it up. So it's a great source for your fish as far as nutrients, and also it cuts down on the cost of your fish food. Uh, what's really neat about duckweed is um, the initial duckweed I got barely even covered this area within three days. This thing was completely full. And then um, what I noticed is it was getting real thick. And so uh, now um, what I don't feed to the fish, periodically I come in here and actually scoop it out, kind of spread it out evenly, you know, thin it out, and then uh, have to obviously dispose of some of that duckweed because it's growing so fast. Now, the duckweed does not like direct light. Here in Honduras, we really, uh, um, we don't have the same as, as, the, as far as the sun and maybe the United States. So you have to be really careful about direct light. So, um, you know, uh, this is, because of the roof of our home and then because of these trees, this duckweed does not get tons of light all throughout the whole day. Um, uh, sometimes duckweed does not like direct light. Uh, so just be careful there. Now, since we're talking about duckweed, let's talk about uh, uh, feeding the fish. Uh, another thing that I'm doing is um, I'm growing moringa trees here. Um, you know, it just depends on where you're at in the world. Uh, you know, you can grow moringa, uh, you, you know, in the uh, more northern states of the United States because of the winters, it could be an issue. But I'm growing moringa trees here uh, because this is another a great food source for fish. Um, I've been slowly introducing these uh, moringa leaves to the fish. Um, what I do is I just take a little bit of uh, leaves and just lay them on the water uh, during the time I feed them and I'm watching fish actually eat them. So uh, moringa is an act, uh, absolutely incredible uh, tree uh, product to uh, feed your fish. Now, one thing that you're going to deal with is mosquitoes. Um, we deal with mosquitoes quite a bit here. Um, and so you want to make sure that any standing water is covered because uh, if it's not covered, um, what's going to happen is you're going to have mosquitoes plant eggs in there and then you're going to have a lot of mosquitoes in your home. So what I did is I just took uh, this area, this is my uh, swirl filter, I've covered this up and I check it periodically uh, and then obviously I clean the uh, fish solids out of the bottom periodically as well. But, um, but I covered this up and now you know we're not having as many mosquito issues. Mosquitoes, obviously, if they want to plant eggs in there, they can all day long. The fish is going to eat the eggs, so that's not going to be a problem. Um, and then, you know, like in here in these uh, siphon filters, um, you know, uh, they could plant eggs in there. That could be a problem. Uh, but but uh, because of the moving water, it, it probably won't be an issue because probably the eggs would just get sucked up into the uh, uh, drainage system. 
Uh, and then as far as in the duckweed, I'm kind of uh, experimenting with something here. Um, you know, you can't cover this up. So what I did is I found online is just to put some fish in there. So I got uh, one little baby fish in there. Um, I actually had two. I don't know if I had an oxygen problem or not because one of them uh, actually died. So I got one baby fish in there. Uh, and then in my sub pit, I got two uh, baby fish in there. So uh, I feed them periodically. Uh, so so my sub pit, my my uh, uh, my duckweed bed, I have uh, fish in there to eat any mosquito uh, eggs and mosquitoes that that uh, are in there. Now, um, okay. Now earthworms. Again, uh, you know, I know I talked about it a little bit. Uh, do a lot of do some research on Google. Um, you can find. Uh, uh, things on how to introduce uh, worms into your grow bed, uh, but it's very, very, very important that you put worms in your grow bed. Uh, you know, just uh, just regular earthworms, um, and and they'll do a marvelous work in your grow bed. Um, they're going to break things down, uh, the fish poop. They're going to uh, they're going to do a lot of things uh, like clean up the roots, uh, and and they're going to uh, uh, you know just break down a lot of things that need to be broke down. Uh, as you can see, I don't know all the technical terms. Just to be honest with you, I'm learning just like you're learning on this as well. Um, and as far as uh, nutrients, again, we covered that. Uh, the uh, True Aquaponics uh, store is a great source for your nutrients. Uh, and then he'll even tell you the dosages and everything. Uh, just a wonderful uh, gentleman to work with. And I love how he just follows up quickly. He gets back with you. Um, um, he's a, a really good guy. He works through emails. He really doesn't want anybody calling him because he's, he's uh, actually, I believe he's a... Uh, you know, has a large aquaponic system, so you know he has a, a business there as well. But he will respond to your emails like immediately. Um, now, as far as the fish, uh, I'm kind of growing my aquaculture system, um, and so I had some initial fish out of that system. And so what I did is uh, they were supposed to be my breeder colonies to uh, develop more fish. Uh, so they weren't working out quite well. So what I did is I put them in here. Right now, I've only got probably about nine fish. A nine to 10 fish in, in, in this uh, system. Now, obviously I'm gonna add more. I've got fish that I'm developing that I'm gonna add more into this system. Now, um, you know, the rule is is uh, like three, uh, one fish per three gallons, that's really pushing it. Uh, but the general rule, a good safe rule, is one fish per five gallons. So I've got like roughly 500, or 550 gallons here, so obviously, uh, just do the math on that five gallons per fish. It's like 110 fish I could put in here And then obviously uh, there's calculations for the grow bed size uh, You know compared to your fish now obviously there's a balancing act you have to um, You know test your water and, and watch your your uh, ammonia levels your nitrites and nitrates You have to watch all that and then your pH uh, So just be careful on that, but uh, there's a lot of information on the ratios of your grow beds to your uh, actual water tanks. Um, one gentleman told me that it's uh, 40 pounds per fish per 16 square foot of grow beds. Um, I calculated that, that was about right compared to another book. Um, uh, and it's a little bit more of a different calculation. But uh, just, you know, there's a lot of information on there on how to, uh, how many grow beds you need and compared to your fish. And the other thing too is don't, you know, be careful, uh, you know, if you're just starting out, don't try to push it, don't try to double the amount of fish in here. All you're gonna do is just cause heartache. It, it's, be it's better to, to, to follow the ratios that they tell you. Uh, and then as time goes by, if you wanna get a little bit more bolder to push it, then push it. You know, uh, right now, um, I'm looking at maybe expanding my grow beds, but again, I'm not gonna do that until this system matures until I got full blown amount of fish in here that I'm going to put in here. Um, and then testing water right now, you know, uh, this system has not fully, this system hasn't even cycled at all. And what I mean by that is your ammonia levels rise and then your grow beds begin to develop to where they can uh, develop uh, 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 the proper bacteria to combat the, the, uh, the, the ammonia and then I believe, and again, please forgive me, sometimes I get this uh, mixed up, but I believe what happens is in it, then the bacteria converts it to uh, nitrate, uh, nitrates, and then it converts to nitrites. Uh, I believe, I may have that backwards, but I apologize, but 
right now, I don't even have ammonia in the system. I mean, I've tested it. The pH is 7.6. Everything else is zero. So uh, I haven't even uh, cycled the system yet. Uh, so in time, like I said, about six to eight months, this whole system will cycle. But you do want to check your water. You do want to test your water. Uh, uh, I use the API Master Test Kit. You can get that at your pet store. Um, and it has all the testing that you need. Um, so I test that. And again, uh, right now, I just it's not something to be worried about uh, or concerned about. I mean, maybe once every two weeks to test it. Because like I said, I don't even have all my fish in here. So, uh, But later on, you definitely will want to be testing and watching your system. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, you know, obviously, again, I said earlier, I'm, I'm just learning this just like you are. So, uh, you know, later on, I'm going to learn more. I'm learning about uh, developing uh, uh, worm castings and developing, uh, you know, worm colony and so forth, you know, to, to add more worms into the system and just all kinds of things. So you, you just always want to be searching YouTube, always want to be learning, always want to be watching more videos. Um, you can most certainly ask me any questions. If I can't answer it, I'll help you try to find the right information. Um, I would be glad to help you. Uh, I love to help people. So in the YouTube uh, video, just ask me a question. Um, if you have any questions about my system, but uh, like I said, right now it's been running probably about two months, uh, probably max. And um, I can really see a lot of improvements, a lot of changes. And uh, the, the, you know, next week I'm going to start really working on the insects. Um, you know, again, I don't have a lot of insects. It's the caterpillars. I've got a product coming that's going to help me with the caterpillars. Um, there's a lot of great videos on how to develop uh, insect prevention, safe insect prevention that's for the plants and for the fish. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to introduce some uh, nutrients into the system next week. Uh, so I believe uh, in my heart we're going to see uh, these plants really, really uh, go well. And uh, as you can see, like, like this plant right here was that size and now it's starting to spread throughout the whole rock. And again, this is peppermint or a, a mint. And uh, so, you know, we're going to be harvesting the leaves. So we have to have a very, very good product uh, for those that's going to be buying our product. So, all right. Well, thanks a lot. And thanks for watching. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Have a good day.